Uh, here we are in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Yes, we're we at are. the Collectors Con e event. And this is a kind of a collage of professional wrestling slash some people from uh, football. football, baseball, and Pokemon, and uh, whatever that is. Yes. And here we are with uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. And I wanted to throw a couple couple iconic pictures up here of, of Jake here that uh, this is, you know, people always know him as being affiliated with having, the, you know, Debbie. I got so how many different snakes? But About then, 40 different snakes. But then I thought this was a real classic one yeah, to really kind of show good. right there because it just shows just that, that, that collage of... Uh, Madness. Yes. Yeah, I'm terrified of snakes, which really makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> so it was a most people, you know, Jake, I'll just ask Chris a couple of random questions, but uh, yeah. correct me where I'm wrong. How long did you, when did you start professional wrestling? 1974. 1974. And what intrigued you about professional wrestling? That's a, it's a pretty wacky well, industry. Yeah, it is. You know, unfortunately, my father wrestled. He was a much bigger man than me, he was seven foot, big four twenty five. Um, as a kid, I was never around him. I thought professional wrestling had taken him away from me. He had to work all the time to come home. The truth was that wasn't it. He just didn't care. Growing up, I always wanted my father to come see me play ball and, and do everything. You know, and, uh, I graduated from high school with honors and. I was going to go to college and become a uh, an architect. That was my dream. But I wanted my father to say he was proud of me. And I want you fathers out there to think about this. Man. I was dying to hear him say that because I'd achieved. And I, I was a good baseball player and a decent football player. But he never showed up for not one game. He got to graduation. So I went down to visit him. Uh, Louisiana, where he was still wrestling. And I uh, oh, said, man, I did all these things, and you weren't there. He said, what do you talk? I was a kid, man, 17 years old. And uh, my dad loved me. So I went out and watched him wrestle one night. And that night, I got into some beer during the show, and... Uh, Ignorance, alcohol, and youth taught me into challenging all the wrestlers. I did, and uh, thank God the guy knew who I was because he could have crippled me, but instead he just stretched me. Really good. And, and for Tony, just so that you understand, I understand exactly what, what Jacob said was just stretch it, but yeah, that, that's the term that, that, that in the real world it means that he took. This, the, the world of fantasy and professional scene that turned into the world of reality. He, what he did to Jake, like he did it in reality. When he said, yeah. stretch it, he was putting the hurt on Jake. Yeah, and he really time. hurt me, and basically I couldn't walk back to the dressing room. I crawled. Wow, that's when crazy. I got there, my father looked out at me, and he said, I'm ashamed of you, you're gutless, and you'll never amount to anything. <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to hear. I remember that night like it was yesterday. I remember that night being in bed, crying, wondering why I made a deal with the devil, prayed to the devil, help me become better than the rest of the tell me I'll do anything to achieve it. I want to make him eat those words. Wow. And uh, I spent the next 20 years of my life full of hate and anger. I didn't do things the right way. I didn't go train. I just went crazy and just went at it. So I got hurt a lot, and uh, but I finally made it. Persevered and uh, made it. And to this day, and he's gone now, he never did tell me he was proud of me. He would tell other people he was proud of me, but would not tell me. And, uh, you know, he's my father, and I love him for being my father, but I don't love him for being a man. But he wasn't a good man. People out there can watch the dark side of the ring and see what I'm talking about. Okay. 
I mean, but that's kind of interesting that when you say it like that. They, they get, I, I've learned things. We've, we've never had this conversation no, no, before. I mean, we, we, we've met each other three times, but kind of very, very superficially, just kind of know of each other yeah. and stuff like that, but on different cards yeah. uh, uh, with each other. So, uh, I mean, even as you as you say that, that kind of hits home with me because I have been an apathy parent for a lot of my life, even though I, my children are right there. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there. But I'm like 50 yards away. There, what during always in the morning, I was doing what I call the daddy deal. I got yeah. them up in the morning. I made the, I, I made the breakfast stuff like this. I even either got them on the bus or took them to school. But by the time they would come home, I'm out. No, I'm, I'm actually out teaching. So I'm 50 yeah. yards away teaching. So dad's out there, or I would make them part of my classes, but I had to treat them the same because I did not want to simply try to make show I'm showing favoritism and stuff like that. Yeah. By the time my class class is done, they're in bed. And I come back in the house because when a class ends, it's never just someone walks out. I mean, but you have to talk to you have to talk to that student about why you did not pay right. me this much, right. or, or, or they have boyfriend problems, they have girlfriend right. problems, they got wife problems, and, and we wind up being fathers too. Students, oh, but not fathers the to our oh, own No, I, I get, I get this. The same thing. So it's kind of like going. I, I try to reach out to my kids all the time because now I have grandchildren yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. So they, they're seeing. But we missed the boat. Yeah, so I, I totally agree. Sad, so, it really is. We, let's, let's let's change the tune. Yeah. Here. Just change the tune here just a little bit. Yeah. I mean that, which I think is good because when you think about well. When you think about today's world, when you look at the, the political realm of things, which I mean, it's, that's an ugly type of thing. You know, a lot of people want to be PC corrected. To me, it's like going, no, I think we need to rub more people's face into reality just to be to understand, hey, this is how you correct things. First, you better realize what we have done wrong, and now let's start to do the, 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 the right stand thing. Up, stand up and take, take yours. Yeah. But the, the biggest way is stand up and be a man. We need a little bit more masculinity in this world that we need to have. Masculinity, we need to get off the computers and off the iPhones and start dealing with each other. Yes. And learn That's, to communicate with each other. Yes. Which is something we have a hard time doing. I, I know we're using both tools, man. We're using the computer, we're using an yeah. iPhone, but this is hopefully. This is a tool, get a message. and this is a tool that, that gets across because something like this, more and more people need to hear that, to get off of these devices and actually interact with That's each other, it. talk to people, put these freaking devices down, talk to people. I mean, here it's going to be a lonely world someday soon because people are quick communicating with each other. I mean, you go into a restaurant, you look around the restaurant, who's actually talking to each other? One or two tables, but everybody else has got their phone and they're staring. Oh, and even when they're with that person, how many times do they keep looking out at their phone? They're not there. They're just being distracted. I go to business meetings, and all the business meetings, they lay they, yeah. they lay so these phones out. It. It's like the, the display of it. And then I, I you know, because they're on me, and I'm like, going, mine's bigger than yours. Like, what? 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 And I'm like, going, <laughs> my cell phone's bigger than your cell phone. But I go, I don't break them in there because you're the most important person for this next one hour that meeting. I don't bring it in there. Yeah, leave it home, man. But that's what has to be done for more. So, by the way, I didn't know we were going to this kind of no, conversation, but at the same time, I'm actually glad but we did. I, mean, I, I actually, did. for what you shared, I really appreciate that you shared yeah, something like that. I appreciate you, know? you very, that, very that, much. That, 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 man. That, 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 that means a lot to, to, to do that, to Jake. But, uh... Just need to love one another, man. Yeah, we, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk to us. That was a great story. Um, just it's great to hear those things from legends like yourself. Thank you. Know, you. I'll, I'll probably keep this short right now, but I, I need to charge up a cell phone. I do yeah, need to charge yeah, up yeah, with this, yeah. but, but if you don't mind, maybe tomorrow. Absolutely. Like earlier, we'll get, get this yeah, do a little yeah, bit more. I shoot the breeze. I enjoy that. Yeah, Jake the Snake, thank you very much. See you guys. All right, well, again, we'll let's let's just jump into it because I get uh, we're looking at this at you know we're here down at the, the uh, Lexington, Kentucky. We're at the Collectors Con, and uh, you know Jake and I we've been sharing booth space besides each other, so we've been interacting on a few different things. But uh, you know, we did a little bit of a of an interview there yesterday. But again, I'm not looking at the interview. There are actually aspects of questions I still want to know, but some of the things that transpired uh, after we we're off because I was over there with the taking back the pictures of, of the snake and some, some iconic pictures but uh, Jacob made that comment that 
you did not like snakes that you actually, I think you said you terrified. were you're terrified by yeah, snakes. Can't stand them. And then I'm thinking, but who came up with the idea of Jake the Snake? You, I you did. Came. I came up with that idea driving down the highway, and I must tell you, be honest with you, I was smoking a joint, drinking beer, and listening to Monday Night but, Football. But, but a lot of artists would say, that's what they, they, they're the most creative. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I came up with it, man. But uh, like most dope heads, I didn't think it all the way through because I'm terrified of snakes. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it worked crazy, well. Crazy, craziest thing was, Dan, is in the locker room, I was scared of it. The bell rang. Now I own it. But, and I had no fear. But there, there's but something as soon as I got back, Oh my God! Get me away from it. But the, there is some, there is something about that when when it's your music, yeah, and it hits stuff yeah. like this. You now want to change it to this this character for the fans. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's that's kind of. I thought it was just me that that this no, crazy I stuff like we this. All do that. <laughs> you know, I can remember being. I remember a couple of times having uh, food poisoning, and just sick as a dog. When that bell rang, I was good, and. That's what gets you killed, you know. That's what gets you hurt because you get hurt out there and you don't even yeah, listen to your body. You just keep going because it's your turn. It's your turn, and you don't want to let your pants down. No. So you want to rise up. You want to, you want to perform. That's that's kind of. I kind of refer to a lot of the comic cons, it's like going to the uh, cauliflower Alley uh, Ballet uh, banquet things that nature. It's start. It's the start of that. Riding off into the sunset yeah. type of a thing for most cowboys here right now. Yeah. It's kind of going, wow. And, and here, Jake and I are now on this this ride as we're slowly riding yeah. off into the sunset that, that our better years are behind us. And uh, we're just here trying to do the best we can yeah. with there the are, people that are around us. So. We're, we're, we're holding on, you know, holding on to the days. But you know what I get out of these cons is I get the opportunity to, to talk to the fans and it never fails. There'll be somebody come up and they'll say, you know, back in the day, my grandpa used to have me come over to his house and that was our time together. And you'll see a little tear come in their eye. And at that moment, man, my heart just, it goes. Because I realize, like it or not, I'm a part of that person's life from now on. I'm a part of their memory. And that's an awesome feeling when you think about it. How many people you touch by going out and doing what we did? Yeah, yeah, no, that's the same thing that happened even here. That, yeah. that you have that young man to go, you know, my dad really liked you, yeah. but you know, you're, you know, by the way, that he's talking, dad's gone now, right. but it's still something he cherishes about watching you Absolutely. and uh, the it, antics it that you did. his memory back to his dad, too. Yeah. You know, it puts him closer to his dad, it's a great thing, man. it really is. Now, now on, on a little bit different note, this could be a little bit more comical note. Um, Jake, I kind of noticed you're not exactly a morning person. No. <laughs> I no. I mean, here you see me coming in. Yeah, I'm dancing you, around with the donuts. Really I'm dancing around with, with, with the coffee here right now. I people like <laughs> and I'm not, not Jake, a morning Yeah. <laughs> I was even trying to offer you coffee and donuts. No, it's kind of going, no, no I, no. I think you want to go one on one with the pillow still. Yeah, now. I just, uh, <laughs> no, my body just hurts right now. You know, I've got to have surgery pretty soon, and uh, I'm not sleeping well at night right now. My foot hurts so bad. You know, but, just, but in general, in general, are you more of a nocturnal type person? No, no, no not, I'm, yeah, I'll be, I'm always nocturnal because that's what I did all my life. I, okay. you know, I wrestled at 8 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. You know, at 10 o'clock at night, normally, that's when I feel best. But I will say in the last 10 years, 10 o'clock, I'm usually asleep. Okay. <laughs> what are the things that you kind of miss, Tony, and anybody else that's watching out there? Uh Jake had a young man that kept coming back to his table several times of yesterday. And each time that he came back, uh, Jake was uh, was was like doctoring him up. He he had all these types of sharpies and stuff like that. And each time the young man would come back over to my place and then he'd have like, he first he had a, a mustache yeah. to him. And then, yeah. he had, then he had like a scar on his forehead. Yeah. And, yeah. and 
I really he asked for it. <laughs> I really didn't know that Jake was so artistic like this, but he was actually making scars and uh, you know some boogers hanging out of his nose. <laughs> oh, a green pin too. It, it was. He actually had green. He came. He actually came over to me and he had his hand like this. He went and he did like a sneeze noise sound and then he put like this and I got. Oh, oh my and, God. and I thought it actually was legit at first, but and here it was. And, and you know you made, you, you, you know you made that kid's day. Fun. You know yeah, you made that kid's fun, day. Man. Yeah, no, it was just one of those fun type of things where, like Jake was saying, we're, we're kind of slow right now, and we're kind of starting to wrap things on up. There's other vendors are starting to take on up, so I, I want to kind of close out really all of this. I, I again, I yeah. appreciate have Jake's time, but to, to also, where can people get in contact with you? So yeah. if they want to book you for right. speaking engagements, right. for signing things, real simple, it's Jake at jakethesnakeroberts.com. That get easier than that's, that now. That's all I have. You know, and uh, you can catch me on Twitter if you want, see what I'm doing. But uh, that's how you get a hold of me. Just uh, send me a message and I will get back with you, no doubt. No, oh, very good. Great. Tony, I, I guess great. I'll, I'll leave with you. Do you have Do you have any other questions at this point? Because I know that Jake's baseball packed up. He's just waiting to do, do, do us. And then he's out the door. Well, I'd just like to maybe reiterate on what he was saying earlier about uh, – you know, fans and you being part of our lives. Like, I'll never forget when you pulled out Damien and the last on to the Macho Man. And I just remember yeah. him grabbing onto him, you know, and I just that's remember my favorite memory of all time. Oh, yeah, that's gr- one of mine oh, as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, like, I, I mean, like I'll I said, thank you as a fan. Man to man, I'll tell you the truth. You know, uh, no, at my age, sometimes if I'm with my lady, I want to get frisky. Sometimes the old snake's not ready. And, <laughs> I just put that video in, and all of a sudden, I'm happy again. And there you go. <laughs> ready to play. <laughs> That's awesome. Love yeah. you guys, man. Thank you so Take much, care. Jake.